So the Raycast hitbox module allows you to easily add hitboxes to basically any 3D object, and the module itself is pretty accurate and performant. But as usual, leave a like and subscribe to support the channel, and let's get into the video. So to get the module, you first need to go to the Raycast hitbox dev forum post. It's going to be linked in the description, but you basically scroll down to the introduction and get it from the creator hub right here. And I already have the script in my inventory, but normally there would be a button right here that would say get model. Or you can get it from this example place right here. And now the rest of this dev form post also gives you some examples, as well as tell you how to use it. It also gives you the pros and cons, as well as the donation link and a GitHub page right here. And really quickly for some big news, the creator of Rekha Seedbox recently announced that they are going to create a new version, which is going to also use shape casting. Now if I go to this notice, they say that this module right now is considered stable and there isn't a need to update it anymore. But if I scroll down, right now there is a preview of the Shapecast hitbox which is going to be the new release as well as a new plugin. And I'm guessing that this is just visualizing how you are going to be able to use the plugin to edit the hitboxes. And it's going to be a huge quality of life because, well, everyone that uses this module already knows that you have to put attachments into the weapon to actually get it working. But with the new release, you will be able to use basically one shape instead. And now really quickly for an introduction, I'm basically going to use a combo system from my previous videos to just visualize the attacks and the hitboxes better. And this is a target dummy that we are going to work with. Also, not everyone might know this, but I make URC items. You can go check them out, the link is going to be in the description. But back to the video. But to actually use the Raycast hitbox module in Studio, first thing we need to insert it. So from the toolbox, I need to go into my models and then search for Raycast hitbox. And it's going to be right here. So you just need to left click on it to insert it into workspace. And from there, we can put it into a container like the replicated storage. And now the script for this battle axe. Like I've said, this is a script from my combo system, except I just changed few variables. But what this basically does is that it loads the animations on the character and then whenever it gets activated, it just adds the attack streak and then just plays the animation. And then this onActive function is connected to the tool activated event. And this is also going to be the script where we are going to make the hitbox detection. But first you need to set up the actual hitbox, so I'm going to remove it from the battle axe and then just make a new one. And well, as the name suggests, the hitbox is an actual box, so we can just add a part. And this is going to be our hitbox for the axe. So I'm just going to make it a little bit transparent, as well as change its color. And now the name of the part can be basically anything, but I'm going to name it hitbox. And then I'm just going to set its size to match the axe's blade. And one thing I forgot about is to disable the collision on the hitbox. But I'm going to make it a little bit bigger because sometimes if the hitbox is too small, it's not going to be too good for gameplay purposes. Then I'm going to move this hitbox into the battle axe and then weld it to the handle by adding a weld constraint and selecting part 0 to be the handle and then part 1 to be the hitbox. But now that we have our hitbox, we need to add damage points to it and a damage point is simply just an attachment. And you can see that we have an attachment right here, and now the name of this attachment should be called damage point. Like this. Because this is telling the framework that this is an actual damage point and not a normal attachment. And these damage points should also be spread out around the hitbox. So one of them could be for example right here, then another one in the center, Let's also make two of them for the blades. And two more down here. And now the orientation of the attachments doesn't really matter. What matters is, like I said, the name and the fact that they need to be parented under the hitbox. And that's everything for the setup of the hitbox. But now let's get to scripting. So to set up the hitbox in scripting, we need to make a reference to the hitbox module. So I'm going to get the replicated storage and then require the Raycast hitbox v4. And now we need to construct the hitbox for our hitbox part. So I'm just going to do that right above the setup function. So the hitbox part is just going to be the tool for child and a hitbox. 
And the new kit box is going to be the Reika seed box and then a new constructor. Now this is going to require an object where this object is going to be the object that holds the attachments. So you just pass it the hitbox part. And now if I just print out the hitbox and then just do a playtest, you can see that Piercy the Reika's hitbox said that six attachments were found in the object hitbox. And that object is the hitbox of our tool in this battle axe. And then this table, this is basically all the functions, utility and methods of the module. And you can see that the hitbox Reika's points is a table that's going to hold all of our attachments. And you have this different stuff like the cast mode, the attachment instance, as well as the last position. So this line right here has basically created our hitbox, and now let's actually get to use it. So on our new hitbox object, we can call different methods. And one of the methods to start the hitbox is called hit start. So we can put it in our on active function, that's the function that's connected to the tool activated event, and we can start the hitbox after starting to play our animation. So I can just do new hitbox and then choose hit start. And now if I do a playtest and then just pull out the battle axe, you can see that nothing is really happening now, but if I activate the tool, you will see that the hitbox has actually started working. And now it's still going to work and that's because we need to call a hit stop in a certain point. And also really quickly because I forgot to mention this, if you don't see these red lines or you want to disable them, you just go to the Reika's hitbox script then scroll down and change the property of show debug ray lines to false. And that's just going to make them disappear. And the hit stop method, it would be best if it was called in like a animation keyframe event, rather than a function right here, but I'm going to show what I mean later in the video from one of my projects that I made some time ago. But since the cooldown of the axe is basically 0.8 seconds, Right now I can just do a task wait and then the current cooldown. And then after that, what I can do is just call new hitbox and then hit stop. So if I do a playtest right now, you can see that the hitbox is going to start and then it's going to stop. And nothing is really going to happen right now when you hit the dummy for example, and that's because we need to use a different event. And that event is also a part of the hitbox object and this is what is going to handle the hit detection. So you just do new hitbox, followed by dot and then on hit, and then choose connect. And in this connect we add a function, and this script isn't really going to tell this, so I need to go to the documentation, where the on hit event, the parameters this gives, is going to be the hit part and the hit humanoid, as well as the result and the group name, but we mostly care about these two right here. So I'm just going to write hit part and then hit humanoid. And then I'm just going to print them out. And now if I go to the dummy and hit it, it's going to return the cylinder 002 and this humanoid. This cylinder is going to be the head of the dummy, so that's what the battle axe actually hit. And then this is going to be the humanoid of the character. So again, if I hit it from a different angle, now it returned this cube which is the body of the dummy, as well as its own axe mesh and my own humanoid. So you also need to check if we didn't hit our own humanoid. And I first check if our character actually has the humanoid, and then I compare if my humanoid is the same as the hit humanoid, then again I just want to do then return and then end. And else I'm just going to print out the humanoid again that we actually hit with the hitbox. And I just commented a few lines so they wouldn't spam the output, but you can basically see that we are hitting the humanoid of the dummy. But that's basically the basics of the Reika's hitbox, but really quickly I'm just going to do a setup for a server validation. And one of the things I'm going to need is the remote event, and I'm going to call it on hit event, because the hitbox is done locally and just reference it from the replicated storage. Then right here I just want to fire the event with the hit humanoid. Then I'm just going to add a server script and again make a reference to the event. 
And then I'm just going to connect a function on the server where we get the player that fired the event and then the hit humanoid that was passed right here. Now, if we don't get this argument, we just want to do if not hit humanoid, then return end. Otherwise, if there is a humanoid, then I just want to do a print on the server with the hit humanoid. And now if I hit the dummy, it's going to print out the hit and then an error for I'm guessing the animator. But let's just ignore this for now. And since the hitbox detection is better done on the client, there needs to be some validation on the server like checking the distance between the player or the player's character that fired the event to the character that had the hit humanoid. And a bunch of different stuff like check latest hit and basically so on. I'm not really going to do that, I just wanted to mention this because I know that some people are going to scream at me for making a local hitbox detection apparently. I had that done previously, but anyways. Now if you want to damage the player after the hit was basically validated, we can just do hit humanoid and then the take damage method. And let's just make it look like 10 health for example. So now this dummy is actually going to be taking damage. And you can see that from the animation playing. And that's because the dummy also has a script in it that basically just plays the hit animation whenever the health changes and then just heals it back up. So I can just keep hitting it and it's going to play the animation. So to talk about the example that I wanted to mention and how I have a framework set up in this project is that I have these different weapons and all of them have these attack animations right here. And these animations, they basically just have a start keyframe and a end keyframe. And if I go to the weapon manager script, there is this function right here called set new keyframe connection. But there is a for loop that basically just loops through the attack animations and then adds the keyframe reached event to the keyframe dictionary. Then the keyframe that reached, it checks if the name of the keyframe was start or stop and then depending on that either starts or stops the hitbox detection. And now that I'm looking at this, this should have been done a little bit differently, but the premise of starting the hit and then stopping it is basically the same. But yeah, that is basically going to be everything for today. So thank you for watching, hope everyone had a nice day and see you guys.